All right, I'll see you tomorrow if you're not already gone. Don't tell me now.
Hello, everyone. It is 6.30 on the dot. We'll wait a couple more minutes for a couple more people to join. Um, the code to check in for this is 957455, and I'll put that in the chat too for you to have there. I have my toddler in the background. I hope he's not, I hope we can't hear him too well. All right, everyone, I think we'll get started. So we have Megan Bolin here from KC Baby Co. Our expert on cloth diapers here to answer all of your questions. And I will let her go ahead and get started. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Megan. Can you hear me okay? Okay, good. I had my husband take the kids completely out of the house. So it's like weirdly quiet. But anyways. <laughs> Um, so I first wanted to thank uh, Jessica and the Junior League of Kansas City for having me. Um, I'm really excited to teach you guys about cloth diapers. This is kind of like my wheelhouse. Um, I own a store. It's an online baby boutique called Kansas City Baby Company. Um, I do sell cloth diapers and then lots of other things, but um, I have a lot of experience in this area. So really my favorite part about it is getting to share that and teach these types of classes. So I'm really glad you guys are here. Um, and please feel free at any point to interrupt me if you have any questions or anything. Um, what I will hopefully do is just share my screen and then um, so I'm not flipping back and forth. I do have some things um, actually sitting here to show you, but so I'm not flipping back and forth. I'll kind of wait until the end um, if that's okay with you guys. So hopefully this works. Okay, can you see that okay? Good? <laughs> yes, it's perfect. Okay. So um, let's see if we'll, we can move here. Here we go. Okay, so um, I think because you're sitting in a cloth 101 class, chances are these are some things that you've already thought about. Um, but just to kind of quickly go over them, some reasons that you might choose to cloth diaper. Um, the first one being the environment. It's, um, these are estimates, of course, but it's thought that about worldwide, there's 20 billion disposable diapers that are thrown away. And then if you add to that, they think it takes about 500 years for a disposable diaper to fully decompose. Um, you can kind of imagine just the absolute heap of trash that we're creating with disposable diapers. Um, so on the flip side, if you choose cloth diapers, 
you can usually get away with only about 24. So you compare that to almost thousands of diapers that you're using. Um, if you go the disposable route, like I said, you can kind of imagine what we're doing to the world there. Um, second reason is money. Um, it is there's a lot of different estimates, but it's definitely way cheaper to use cloth diapers than it would be disposables. Um, again, these are some estimates, but if you, um, if, a, if a baby potty trains around two and a half to three years is the average, um, that two and a half to three years, you're changing thousands of diapers. So there's a diaper company, um, Grovia, that did some math on this. They estimated you'll spend about fifteen hundred to two thousand diaper two thousand dollars on disposable diapers in that two and a half years, compared to um, anywhere between two and four hundred dollars will get you about twenty four diapers. Um, so it's a in total a savings of about a thousand dollars, and that's kind of on the low end. Not to mention when that baby does potty train, you can use the cloth diapers again on your next baby. Um, the diapers that I bought with my first, I'm still using on my fourth. Um, they look a little worn, but they still work perfect. Or you can usually resell them pretty easily. So you can actually make some money back. Um, third would be health. A lot of babies have really sensitive skin and we aren't 100% sure what's in disposable diapers. Those companies aren't legally required to disclose the ingredients. Um, so who knows what's in there? And then if they do, there's a lot of scary things that can hide under um, a fragrance label or an adhesive label or an ink label. So you aren't 100% sure what you're putting on your baby. And then lastly, if you are gonna change those thousands of diapers that um, I talked about, why not have a ruffle on the bum or have it be a cheap sprint or just something that makes you smile? Let's see. Sorry, there we go. Okay, so um, the different types of cloth diapers. At the most basic level, every diaper needs two components. You need something that's going to absorb the liquid, and then you need to have something that's gonna keep it waterproof and keep everything contained within the diaper. So how those two pieces come together is the difference between the, the different types of diapers. So. For me personally, and what I've heard from a lot of people, this is the absolute most confusing part of cloth diapering because there's just so many kinds. So if you kind of keep in mind, you need something absorbent and you need something waterproof, you're just looking at the difference of how those two pieces come together. So we have prefolds, flats, and fitteds. These are all absorbent only, meaning that you need to pair them with a waterproof cover which we'll talk about here in just a second. But again, these are only your absorbent component of your diaper. So there are they will all be a one-time use, meaning that once they're dirty, wet, um, they're done and they need to be washed. So prefolds and flats, kind of like they sound, they're just literally a flat piece of cloth that needs to be folded in some type of way and then put inside a cover. So there is a little bit of work at each change because you are doing some type of folding. Um, but the advantage to that is they're by far and away the most economical option. So if you um, want a cloth diaper because you want to save money, this is definitely the way that you would want to go because they're just a few dollars a piece. And then if you flip over to the fitted side, these again are absorbent only. So they would need a cover. Um, the advantage here is they are shaped like a diaper. So uh, there's not really a lot of folding or pinning or anything involved. Again, they're a one-time use. So once they're dirty or wet, they would get washed. Um, the advantage to these is they're super absorbent. So these are really good to use at nighttime um, or nap time. Okay, so to pair with those, these are, um, this is a diaper cover. So this is just your waterproof component. So you would always need something absorbent sitting inside of here. Um, they kind of vary depending on the brand, but because of the material, you can wipe them clean really easily. So what you would do is you would lay your prefold inside this cover. When baby is wet or dirty, you would take the prefold out 
put a new one in this exact same cover and you can reuse that throughout the day. So this is another one, if money saving is your goal, um, this is definitely the route to go because these are usually between 10 and $15 each. So paired with pre-folds, they're absolutely the cheapest way to cloth diaper. Um, they're usually made with um, PUL or TPU, which is the material. Basically all that means is it's just a piece of cloth that's been laminated to keep it waterproof. Okay, and then you have an all-in two. So these, um, same idea as the pre-folds and covers, but what certain brands do is they try to make these come together a little bit easier. So the one that's pictured here is called a Grovia. What they've done is they have the absorbent piece that snaps into the cover. So you have a little bit easier change since you're not folding anything compared to the pre-folds. Um, so what you would do is you just snap in an insert. Once it's wet or dirty, you take that out, snap in a new one, and you're reusing that same cover throughout the day. Um, Budget-wise, they're kind of right in the middle. And there is just a little bit of prep needed at each change. It's not a lot, you're just snapping, but there is a little bit that goes into it. Then you have pocket diapers. Um, what these are is you have your basic cover with a lining sewed into it that has a pocket opening. So you would need to take your absorbent piece of cloth and actually stuff it into that pocket. So there is a little bit of prep needed. Um, it's still easier than it would be like folding a pre-fold, um, but you just put that absorbent piece inside the pocket. Once it's wet or dirty, the entire thing goes into the wash. So it's all a one-time use. Um, but the advantage would be, it's really easy to customize these. So if you need, um, you know, more absorbency for nighttime, you can add additional inserts and um, the same diaper could still work for the daytime without as many. And then the last type is called an all-in-one. Um, just like it sounds, all the pieces that you need are all inside one diaper. Um, it varies a little bit between the brands, but the absorbent piece is always going to be somehow connected to the waterproof layer. So compared to some of the other types, there's not a lot of working pieces here. They're as close to a disposable as you can get, meaning that you just put it on. When it gets dirty, you take it off. Um, so these are definitely the most convenient. Um, they're not as scary as some of the other ones, but they are one of the most expensive options out there. Um, they usually cost between 20 and $30 a piece. Um, so I feel like I flew through that, but before I go any further, is there any questions about those different types of diapers that I missed? Maybe. Okay, so like I said, I feel like I flew through that. So don't hesitate to interrupt me if you need to. Um, but how in the world do you choose? Um, first of all, I think the most important thing is to think about what your motivating factor is for cloth diapering. Um, if you are 100% in it to save money, then like I mentioned, pre-folds and covers would definitely be the best option for you. Or um, maybe you just wanna avoid all those chemicals that we talked about in disposable diapers, budget isn't so much of an issue. Um, you just wanna avoid chemicals and make your life as easy as possible, then I would kind of steer you towards the all-in-ones. Um, personally, I found a mix of things are the best. Um, I'll use things at different times. So I will, if I'm at home and um, I have a little bit more time, I'll use a pre-fold and a cover because again, pre-folds need a little bit of work ahead of time. If I'm out and I'm gonna be changing diapers in the car, or public bathroom or whatever, I'll pack all in ones because those are the ones that just, you put the diaper on and that's it. So I think the best way to kind of um, get started on choosing what you'd like to do is just think about what your motivation is. Uh, some more things to think about. Once you've kind of landed on a style that works best for you, there's a few more options. So the diaper closure, the diapers will either come in snaps 
or um, what's called hook and loop, which is basically just Velcro. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to both, but that's an option for you. Um, the next would be the material that's inside the diaper. Um, there's a lot of options there. Natural fibers would include um, hemp, cotton, bamboo. Um, the advantage to those is, like I said, they are a natural fiber. So if you're in it to avoid chemicals, that's what I would steer you towards. They tend to be more absorbent than um, a synthetic material like microfiber. But again, that's an option. And then um, that material, is it stay dry or not? So some diapers have a stay dry material that will, as soon as the baby pees, will wick all that moisture away and they will feel totally dry. Um, it's kind of up to the individual baby on that. I've had some of my kids that the minute they feel wetness in their diaper, freak out. So I always needed stay dry with them. Um, my daughter could have cared less. So that's another thing to consider is if it's stay dry or not. And then sizing. Um, you can do one size diapers that will fit from about eight to 10 pounds all the way up through potty training. So that one diaper is all that you need. Or you could do a size option, um, which isn't quite as popular, but um, if you're really concerned about fit, that's what I would steer you towards. And th there aren't as many sizes as disposable. So we're usually just talking about one or two sizes here. And then the biggest question I think on everyone's mind is how you deal with the poop. Um, I think a lot of people picture cloth diapering, you're just elbow deep in poop and that just, that's not how it has to be. So if your baby is exclusively breastfed, the good news there is that you're in kind of the honeymoon period of cloth diapering. You don't have to do a thing to it ahead of time. Um, that poop is completely water soluble. So you could just, once, it's a, once you have a dirty diaper, you can just throw it in whatever you're storing dirty diapers in and not worry about it until wash day. Um, once you've introduced formula or solids, you do need to do something ahead of time to remove um, the poop. So there's a lot of tools that can help you do that. There's um, liners, which I can show you that you lay inside the diaper between the diaper and the baby. Those kind of act like a net, meaning any liquids will pass right through, but the solids will just sit on top. So then once you have a poopy diaper, you just pull the liner out and then the diaper can go in your laundry basket. Uh, there's diaper sprayers, which kind of look like um, a kitchen sink sprayer, but those attach to your toilet. So when you have a dirty diaper, you can just spray everything straight into the toilet or um, my favorite thing, the, the cheapest option is what I use is just a spatula. And it sounds bizarre, but you would just take your diaper, your dirty diaper over to the toilet. I had a dedicated spatula that never entered the kitchen. It was only for poop. And you just scrape it right off the diaper into the toilet and that's that. And so washing, again, you'll need to, um, once your baby has formula or solids, anything other than breast milk, you're gonna do something to remove the poop um, as soon as you can. You don't wanna let that sit. So ideally within right away or within a few hours, you're gonna remove that poop and then store them in um, a wet bag or a pail liner, which we'll talk about here in a second. You want to um, not go any longer than every three days. So ideally your diapers won't sit longer for the longer than the three days because then they'll start to kind of build up ammonia and get a little bit sinky. So I wouldn't wash any longer than every three days. And then you'll start with a pre-wash. Um, there you'll, you'll choose in whatever short cycle your washing machine has. So you're just looking for a short cycle, any water temperature, and what this is gonna do is basically give your diapers a really good rinse. So it's gonna rinse out all the pee, um, any little bit of poop that's left over. Um, it'll give everything a good rinse. So then when you move on to the main wash, you're not trying to wash in super mucky, nasty water. Then you move over to your main wash, which you would choose your longest, heaviest agitation cycle. You'd add your 
um, detergent, the water softener if you need to, and then just let it go. And then um, when you dry, you can either machine dry or you can line dry, either one. Okay, so some accessories. Um, we kind of talked about the wet bag. Basically what this is, is um, a way to store your dirty diapers until you're ready to wash. So they're usually made with the same cover that, or the same material that covers are made with, that kind of waterproof um, laminate cover. So um, nothing will leak out. So those come in a thousand different sizes. You can get a huge bag to keep at home and hold all of your diapers until wash day. You can get a small size to keep in your diaper bag um, if you're changing diapers while you're out and about and um, lots of different options there. Doublers would be basically just a single piece of fabric that you can add into any diaper if you're needing to increase the absorbency. So if you had an all-in-one diaper that you need to last through nap time, you can grab a doubler add that to it and just increase the absorbency since the baby would be wearing it a little bit longer. Um, cloth wipes are just like they sound, they're just little square pieces of cloth, kind of like a wash rag that you would use in place of disposable wipes. Um, these you wash and dry exactly like your cloth diapers. So I always um, use them and love them. I think they work a little bit better because they're nice and thick. And then you can you don't have to worry about separating a disposable wipe for the trash and then throwing your cloth diapers in the laundry. Everything can just go together and makes life pretty easy. Um, closures, this funny looking thing is called a snappy. What these are for is if you are using pre-folds or flat diapers that we kind of talked about at the very beginning that you are folding, these will hold it in place. So I Think they compare best to like if you have an ace bandage the little metal piece with the the metal teeth what that does is it just holds the the material in place and then diaper cream um with cloth diapers you want to avoid creams that have petroleum or zinc oxide because what those do over time is they kind of cling to the fabric of your diaper and almost build like a layer on top. So what can happen, and this is like with repeated use, if you forget and use it once or twice, it's not gonna be the end of your diapers. But what they can do is create a layer on top of the fabric to where it won't absorb anything. So it's best to avoid, um, like I said, petroleum or zinc oxide. There's tons of cloth specific diaper creams out there or usually anything that says all natural would work too. Um, but in general, with, with using cloth diapers, in my experience at least, um, you don't have as many rashes. I definitely haven't needed anything with every change as a preventative, um, but something to think about there. And then um, this is how you can get a hold of me. I have um, several pages on my website. It's just kcbabyco.com that has basically everything that we have talked about. Um, so any, any questions that you would have, you can email me or Facebook and Instagram. It's just at Kansas City Baby Co. You can send a message there. Um, always happy to help with any questions you have. Um, don't feel like you have to purchase from me. Like I said, my favorite thing is just sharing the information that I've learned. So um, any questions you have there, you can just get a hold of me, however is easiest for you. Um, let's see. Okay. Okay, so any, I've, again, I feel like I absolutely flew through that, but if there's any like burning questions, let me know. Otherwise I can show you some of these things. Hopefully they'll come across okay. I've got a question. So yeah. using the spatula to help clean the diapers, how do you clean the spatula? Um, so I usually just, if there's something left on the spatula, scrape it against the toilet itself 
or I just use the toilet brush cleaner and that's where I store it too. I store it all there together. Um, that's worked really well for me. Okay, so I'll show you guys kind of what I have. Um, this is a flat diaper. It has a new life as a kitchen rag. So these are not poop stains, but <laughs> um, it is just one square piece of cloth that's really thin. So kind of like the pre-fold, um, I won't get into the thousand and one ways you can fold these, but these are one that you would fold in some kind of way. And then here's your waterproof cover. You would just lay it inside and it's cured around the baby. So once this gets wet or dirty, this comes out, you grab your new one, put that inside, this cover you're reusing throughout the day. Then this is a pre-fold. So I'm not sure you can tell, but these are a little bit thicker, kind of more quiltier than the flat would be. They're called a pre-fold because they have these surged lines right here. So they're almost pre-folded. Um, so again, you would fold this in some kind of way, put it inside your cover. Once this is dirty or wet, this goes away, you add your new one in and you're good to go. Um, this is the fitted diaper that we talked about with those two. So it's cut like a diaper, it's gonna have closures, but it's still just your absorbent piece. So these um, are always my favorite for nighttime or nap time because they are so much more absorbent and a little bit more convenient than doing all the folding and stuff. But again, this would go inside your waterproof cover once it's dirty you switch it out for a new one. Um, this maybe you can see is just the waterproof cover. It's kind of like um, a shiny laminate type feel to it, but it's still really soft and flexible. It's not um, like my grandma always talked about the rubber pants that she used for her kids. It's, it's definitely a lot more flexible. And I think I have to imagine more comfortable than those would be. But um, these, like I said, you're gonna reuse several times throughout the day. If they do get something on them, it, it will wipe off super easily. And here is a pocket diaper. So it has the lining on it with just literally a pocket opening. So you would take your piece of absorbency and stuff that down inside the pocket do that a little bit nicer to where you're kind of left with this and then snap that on the baby. Once this is dirty or wet, the entire thing goes into the wash. So nothing about a pocket is reusable. Um, here is the Grovia hybrid that we looked at. So this one, same idea as a pre-fold and cover in that you're just switching out the absorbency and using the cover several times throughout the day. But what they've done to try to make life a little bit easier so you're not folding is they've created these inserts with a snap on the back. So you just snap it into your cover. Once it's dirty, this comes out, you grab a new one, snap it in. This part's being reused throughout the day and you're just switching out the covers or the inserts, I'm sorry. So these are another pretty economical choice. Um, because you don't need as many covers as you do inserts. And then lastly, uh, here's an example of an all-in-one. So the absorbency is always going to, in some way, be attached to the waterproof cover. So you're only dealing with one piece. Um, this is an Apple Cheeks brand that just sews everything together. So it's just one piece goes on the baby when it's dirty or wet, that comes off and the whole thing goes in the wash. Um, so these are a good one for like, if you have um, a babysitter, daycare or whatever, that's maybe not as comfortable with diaper with cloth diapering, 
these, um, like I mentioned, are as, about as close to disposable as you could get in terms of you just put it on and you're done. You're not folding, pinning, doing anything like that. Um, let's see. Some of the accessories. This, it looks like a dryer sheet, but it's really soft. Um, this is the diaper liner. So when you're going back to talking about poop, what you do with these is you would grab your diaper and set this liner on top. So what that does is any liquids go straight through and are absorbed by this piece. But then um, if you have a solid little poop, that would sit right on top to where when you go to change, you just wrap all this up, get rid of it, and then your diaper can go into your wet bag and wait for laundry day. Um, let's see. Here's a good example of a cloth wipe. This one's just a little square, thick terry cloth. Um, but like I had mentioned, these are nice and thick. So I always like using cloth diaper or cloth wipes instead of disposable because you're really just kind of, no matter how nasty the poop, you're kind of just needing one and everything can get washed together. So like I said, you're not separating out what's trash versus what goes in the wash. Um, Cause it was inevitable that we always had disposable wipes in the wash until I got a hold of these, so. Um, let's see. This is pretty specific to this um, Grovia brand that had the snap-in inserts, but they do have a disposable option. It looks like a, like a, sanitary pad like we would use. Um, but these are kind of like a natural disposable diaper. So the idea behind these is if you're traveling and you don't quite want to give up on your cloth, um, you can, it has a sticky back like a pad would and everything. You just stick these inside your cover. And again, once they're dirty, they go in the trash, but then you can just stick a new one in. So um, I use these, we took a road trip to Nashville and I use these in the car. So once we got to our hotel, I switched back to these snap-in inserts. But when we were on the road for so many hours, this was really helpful to me because I didn't have to buy actual disposable diapers. So like I said, that's kind of specific to this one brand, but there's lots of stuff like that out there. Let's see what else they have in here. Um, going back to sizing, if you see all of these snaps, this is a one size diaper. So I mentioned they usually start to fit at about eight to 10 pounds. What you would do is you snap this all the way down. and it shortens the length of the diaper. So then you'd come up and around and that would fit your itty bitty little 10 pound baby. And then as baby grows, you just let these out. There's a second rise through here, but compare that to this is like as big as it would go. So I don't know if that shows very well, but um, there's a ton of material here. So they truly do fit from newborn through potty training. So you compare that to, this is a size diaper. This is a, just a newborn diaper that would fit through about 15 pounds. Um, and then you would buy a couple of sizes up as the baby grows. So I would always steer people towards one size diaper just because you're just buying one thing that's gonna last you through potty training. Um, but, Sometimes it bothers people to have that much fabric on a tiny little baby. Um, it does look a little bit bulky. So if that's something that bothers you, you can go the size route and keep a super thin kind of profile under onesies or whatever they're wearing. Um, but I definitely think the one size option is probably the best. Um, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna 
If there's anything else, feel free to shout. I have some Otherwise, questions some in the, there's some questions in the chat. You want me to read them to you? Oh, here we go. I was not paying any attention to that. That's okay. Can you see them? Yeah. Okay. Okay, is the irritation more or less common with cloth diapers due to the detergent? Um, it can be, but the good news is that, and I skipped right over detergent completely, so I'm glad you asked that. Um, there's not a lot of rules in cloth diapering, but one of the rules is to never use a detergent that has fabric softener in it. Um, for the same reason that we talked about with the diaper cream, fabric softener is meant to just cling onto fabric and live there. So it can kind of create a barrier and not allow any, anything to be absorbed. So um, like I said, one of the rules, avoid fabric softener. With that said, um, detergent issues and sensitivity can happen, um, but it's super easy to switch things out. And if you, like if you know, for example, this one detergent works well on clothes and you have no issues, you can use that for diapers too. So. Like I said, I mean, it can't happen. It's not, I wouldn't say super common and it's really easy to switch up your detergent. Um, do you ever, do you feel like cloth diapers cause more yeast diaper rashes? Um, I don't know that cloth causes them, but it can be tricky if you already have a yeast infection and you continue to cloth diaper through that, you do have to treat them a little bit differently um, to make sure you're killing the yeast in the diaper. So um, that's one of the few times you would use bleach on your cloth diaper. Um, I think in general, if I was dealing with a yeast infection, I would just use disposables until it's completely cleared up. Um, however, you don't have to, you just have to be careful that you're completely killing the bleach or killing the yeast with bleach in your diapers because otherwise just your regular wash routine the yeast can survive that and then you just kind of get in this perpetual cycle where it's really difficult to get rid of the yeast um so i would say i don't feel like they necessarily cause yeast but because because it can live in the fibers through just your regular washing it can be more difficult to get rid of it um, but bleach will kill it. You just have to treat them a little bit differently through that. Um, let's see. Allie says, how long do cloth diapers last? When do you recommend we toss them or they've reached their max life? Um, so it kind of depends. Like I said, I have diapers that I use with my um, firstborn that I'm still using on my fourth. Um, I wish I had brought down some of my actual diapers. So if you have something like a prefold or a flat, these I feel like will live forever. Like this flat I said has a second life as a dish towel. Um, prefolds are nice and thick and last forever. Um, you can start to, after a while, see some wear holes in them, but something like this will last a very long time compared to, um, like see if we go back to this all in one, what you see, and this is after like years of use I'm talking. So definitely the last um, one child, if not two, three, but what will happen is just kind of like a shirt and they'll kind of get some wear holes on them, but you would not believe the rattiest ratty diapers that I own that look terrible, but still perform and get things done. Um, so to answer your question <laughs> in a short way, um, they'll, they'll last years and you'll know when to toss them just because they'll either be so ratty you can't get them on or um, they'll have too many holes to, to where they can't absorb anything. Um, and then you asked my personal favorite type, I think, um, let's see. If I had to choose one, what I probably use the most on my own kids is this Grovia system. So this is the one that just snaps in. It's just so easy 
Um, kind of budget wise, it's middle of the road. So these inserts for a pack of two are between $17 and $18. And then this cover is 15. So they um, really save a lot of money. And then they're not a lot of work. Like my husband, um, when we first started cloth diapering, he was like, I don't get it, this is your deal. But these are easy enough that he's finally, four babies later, came on board. Mm -hmm. uh, all you have to do is snap it in. So um, my personal favorite, that's a hard, it's a hard one, but I think I'd have to go with this one. Um, lowest maintenance, easiest to use. I'd say lowest maintenance would probably be the prefold, just because like I kind of going back to how long they last, I feel like these are generally indestructible, but then easiest to use would probably be this all in one, just because this compared to the prefold that you're folding, putting inside a cover, there's just not a lot of working parts to this. You just put it on and go. Um, so in terms of being easiest to use, probably this all in one. Um, do you have to use a special detergent? So yeah, going back to um, really anything that doesn't have fabric softener in it, um, Tide powder is a good option to start with, or if you want something uh, more natural, plant-based, seventh generation is a good one. Um, curious about being tough on germs for any, yeah, so um, as long as you're using the recommended amount um, of detergent for like a heavily soiled item, which of course a poopy diaper would be, um, really most detergents would do fine. So whatever um, you're already using, as long as it doesn't have fabric softener, I would stick with that. Um, for the cover with the snap-in insert, how many covers and how many liners? So uh, regardless of what style you choose, 24 is a pretty comfortable number to have. Um, when the baby's younger, you'll be going through about 12 diapers a day. Um, compared to when they're a little bit older, that goes goes down in number. So 24 is kind of my magic number. So in the beginning, you're gonna be washing a little more often, but then as the baby gets older and uses less per day, you can stretch it out to that every three days. Um, so with that 24 number in mind for the system that you asked about with the snap-in insert, I would get about four to six covers and then 24 inserts. So 24 inserts give you your magic 24 number. Four to six covers gives you um, one to two to rotate between every day with a couple more just as backup. Um, how many need, do you need to have? Okay, so if you, so this one with the different pieces, like I said, you'd need your full 24 in the inserts about four to six covers. If you go with something like the all-in-one, you would need 24 of these. And um, some of the other systems, like if you did the pre-folds with the cover that I lost, um, this would be the same as the snap-in. You would need your 24 inserts and then about four to six covers. Um, okay, so let's see. So you're comfortably stocked and not overwhelmed and worried about keeping up with laundry. So like I said, I mean, 24 is my magic number because you don't really want to go longer than three days washing anyways. Um, but you could go up to like 36 and definitely kind of have those extra diapers almost as like insurance if you do fall behind. Um, and if you go longer than three days washing, it's, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to ruin your diapers. Um, I just wouldn't make that a habit necessarily. Um, and then any preference on closure types. So I, let's see, I really like snaps. Um, just because they're, 
they're easy, they don't wear out, they'll last forever. Um, it's not super tricky to find the right fit because you can just kind of move in and out as you need to. But that would be one thing that some people complain about with snaps compared to obviously with Velcro, just like a disposable, you just kind of stick it where you need to and move on with your life. Um, my complaints about the Velcro is you need to keep the teeth clean. It's really easy for lint and whatever else to get stuck in the teeth and then it won't stick as well. So is that a huge chore? No, but it's something that you need to do is keep those clean. And then when you go to wash it, you need to fold the Velcro down into the diaper. I don't have one that's a great example of it, but they'll usually have a little tab on the inside for it to fold down and stick to. So when you take the dirty diaper off and you're using Velcro, you wanna make sure to stick those down before it goes in the wash. Otherwise you'll come out with like a huge diaper chain of Velcro stuff stuck together. Um, and not to mention um, around, in my experience around 17, 18 ish months, if my kids don't have pants on, that's the age they figure out Velcro comes apart really easily. So um, snaps are, I'd say a little more difficult for them to open up and pull off. Um, so if I had to choose one, I would say snaps for sure. Um, but I think they both kind of have their place. Um, are there times when you could still use disposables like flying or seeing at a hotel? Um, for sure, I, cloth diapering doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, with my, my first baby, I felt like um, if I did not use cloth 100% of the time, I was destroying the world for her future. <laughs> like I was really um, big about the environmental aspect of it to the point that um, it almost like if we were gonna go on a trip and we didn't have access to a washer, I was like, well, we can't go to that place then. Um, as I added more kids, I got a little more relaxed about that. And really um, it's whatever makes your life easier. If it's easier, if you're flying, staying at a hotel, you know, traveling in any kind of way, if it's just easier to grab a pack of disposables, I say absolutely go for it. Um, and even if you're not traveling, like I said, it doesn't have to be all or nothing. If it's easier for you to use cloth at home, but the thought of packing everything in a diaper bag for a day out is completely overwhelming, just keep disposable diapers in the car and use those while you're out. Um, you can definitely just, there's no rules there. <laughs> um, let's see, anything else? That's it on the chat. Um, do you want to talk about diaper stripping? Yeah, um, so I kind of purposely leave that out at first just because that's sometimes it's like information overwhelm, but you definitely hear that tossed around a lot. Um, what diaper stripping is, is kind of um, like a deep clean on your diapers. So this would be outside of your regular every three day washing routine. So if you, um, for example, you washed uh, for several washes with a detergent that had fabric softener, or you, you know, to get through a really bad rash, used diaper cream with petroleum in it, and you just feel like they're not, your diapers aren't as absorbing as well as they used to, you would do a deep clean or what's called a strip. So um, there's several different ways to do that. Um, there's some, some homemade concoctions that you can use or Grovia, um, the brand that makes this snap and diaper, they make little pods called Mighty Bubbles that will strip for you. Um, but basically, like I so said, what you're doing is you're doing a deep clean. So if you're using something like the Mighty Bubbles, or like I said, you can use, you can make your own, your own homemade concoction. Generally, what you do there is you're gonna soak the diapers in that solution for up to several hours at a time. And it's just doing like a deep clean, um, stripping away whatever may have been causing the absorbency issues. And then um, it kind of gets you back to neutral in a way. So generally um, the big culprits 
fabric softener or diaper cream cause a layer on top of the fabric that makes it not absorb. So bacteria, whatever else gets trapped under that layer kind of makes things, you get into a stinky type situation where even clean diapers are not smelling great. So that in that situation, you would strip. Um, but in general, I think if you keep with that good routine, you're washing every three days, you're making sure that you remove as much poop as possible. You're doing the pre-wash and then the long, heavy agitation main wash. Um, with a good wash routine and a good detergent, and you're using the appropriate amount of detergent, um, stripping really shouldn't be something that you do. Um, really only if you encounter any issues. So um, I, it's kind of hard on your diapers. So it's not something I would recommend doing every so often just because I'd only do that if you encounter an issue. And with a, a good wash routine, you shouldn't have any issues. Anything else? I know that's a lot of information, but kind of like I mentioned, um, if you go to my website, which is kcbabyco.com, there's a link on the side that says Cloth 101, and it's kind of broken down into more digestible chunks, but it'll it'll have most of the information we talked about. Oops. And then any questions that you have as you, you know, even tonight or as you try to make some decisions on if you want to choose choose cloth, um, if you need some direction on what types to use, um, anything that comes up, like I say, you can email me, um, message through any of the social media, whatever way is easier for you, you can get a hold of me and I'm, I'd be glad to help you there. I will say I use cloth diapering. Um, my husband was the first to mention it when we, um, found that we were pregnant, he was right away like, oh, we're doing cloth diapers, like disposable diapers, like bad for the environment. Yeah. <laughs> and all that. Um, and that's, that was like, I think it's the biggest help because with all the washing and stuffing and everything, like having your husband on board is like the biggest, um, the biggest thing. It's not like the extra laundry isn't, isn't that bad. Yeah, that's, um, I think if anything, it helps me keep up on laundry because when you're out of diapers, you're out of diapers. So um, it's easier for me to keep all of our other laundry kind of moving through and not stacking up. So um, I really was kind of intimidated by, you know, I just thought I would be doing nothing but laundry and that hasn't, hasn't been the case for me. So I don't, I don't feel like it adds a ton of burden there. Well, it looks like there's one more question in the chat. Um, what are your thoughts on local companies that provide the diapers, pick up, wash them for you, and return them? Um, I think if that's in your budget to do it, and um, that that will allow you to cloth diaper when you wouldn't otherwise, I say go for it. Um, I think um, I think her name was Tabitha, and I think it was called Metro Cloth Diapering. Is someone that I had talked to in the past. I'm not 100% sure she's still in business. So if um, if there is a local business that's doing it right now, I don't personally know them, but that doesn't mean they they aren't awesome. I just don't have that um, personal knowledge of it. But but like I said, if that if that is in your budget and that allows you to cloth diaper, I say go for it. Um, for the most part, um, those it'll vary a little bit, but from what I've seen. Since they do provide the diapers, it's usually the prefolds and the covers, um, just because they more often than not use big industrial machines. They're kind of harder on the all-in-one type diapers. So um, if that's okay with you, I say go for it. Then I have a question about overnight diapers. So we use disposable diapers overnight because I can't seem to get my clock a week ago I used I did three layers of inserts and he still woke up in the morning with like a wet bed so what do you suggest for an overnight cloth diaper if it's possible um, that can be a little bit tricky so I think in general um this fitted diaper is um where I would start just because 
they have more layers to them because mm -hmm. the entire thing's absorbent. So I would go with the fitted and then you can still shove as many extra inserts as you can in here and mm -hmm. still get it under a cover. Um, but at the point that you're just adding that many inserts, you wanna make sure you check the fit, um, which isn't really something I talked about, but if you, let's see, you wanna always make sure and check around the legs. So I don't know how well you can see this, but you would yeah. like, this is the absorbent piece. You always wanna make sure that's tucked inside the waterproof part. If you were to leave it like that, then once this gets wet, it's gonna wick out. So um, the same thing can happen up around the belly. So that would be one thing to check um, when you keep adding inserts is that you're still getting a good fit around the legs and around the waist. But in general, overnight, um, I, I really like fitteds. Or like you said, to save your sanity, sometimes you just need to do disposables. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that at all. So. <laughs> Does anyone else have any more questions? All right, and I think everyone got checked in. Um, just let uh, message me, let me know if you need help um, with your attend getting checked in and whatnot. But otherwise, uh, thank you very much, Megan, for yeah, schooling for us sure. on cloth diapers. Yeah, thank you guys so much for coming. And like I said, never hesitate to reach out with any questions. I'm always happy to help with whatever it is. So thank you for coming and thank you, Jessica, for having me. Yeah. All right, everyone, have a good night. All right, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Uh.